Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwensa Garden in Ireland and May. Oh, wow, <laughs> such an exhausting time for us gardeners. There's just so much to do and so much to keep up with. So today we're taking a break and we're going to visit a garden called Kulak Garden. It's local to me and it's the garden of friends of mine, Caroline and Harry Deacon. Now at this time of year their garden is awash with colour from rhododendrons and all kinds of colourful bushes but we're going to see two specific things there today. We're going to see the laburnum arch. Now laburnum like my one here behind me is a fantastic late May spectacle and we're going to see it there at Kulak and we're also going to see the most important impressive display of cypripedium or slipper orchids that you're ever likely to see. Certainly the best I've ever seen. So come on, come with me and let's visit Kulak Garden. Today we're visiting Kulak Garden in Wexford, Ireland, a private garden created and run by Harry and Caroline Deacon. The garden also has an excellent nursery specialising in unusual trees and shrubs at very reasonable prices. I've been visiting this garden for some 20 years and May is a particularly lovely time to visit as the extensive rhododendron collection is in full flower and the laburnum arch is at its best. Kulak has been the Deacon family home since 1900 and gardening has been running in the family since Harry's grandmother started tending the front garden of the former doctor's house, then part of the famed Castleborough estate. The crocus lawns at the front of the house were planted by Harry's aunts some 90 years ago and while they were at it they planted some glorious heritage daffodil specimens still seen today. But that's all finished by May, of course. Harry's mum was a keen gardener too, but for a long time it wasn't a passion that Harry inherited, preferring to grow fruit and vegetables rather than flowers. The gardens, as we see them today, started to take shape when Harry married Caroline, an enthusiastic plants woman. Taking part in the National Gardens competition in the year 2000, Kulak placed second in Wexford, the first private garden to rank so highly. Soon Kulak began receiving phone calls from individuals and gardening clubs about organising tours. In May 2001, Kulak Gardens opened to the public but only on Sunday afternoons as the family still had the farm to tend to. Since then, Caroline and Harry expanded their opening and the gardens are now open five days a week. I love the choice of colours here of the different rhododendrons. Such bright colours aren't usually seen. It's usually pastels, pale pinks or whites or yellows but they really have exuberance in their selection. And look at this Cytosis intermingled in such an intimate way with the rhododendron or azalea below. Gorgeous, just gorgeous. And that yellow carpet over there is the annual poached egg plant. Did it ever look so good? The laburnum arch is not quite at its peak yet, but it is already a joy. This arch is made from laburnum trees, which are planted at intervals and trained over the metal framework of the arch so that they completely clothe it. When in bloom, golden pea-like racemes droop down and give the whole arch a very romantic feel.
It's a great place to be on a sunny day and the Laburnum Arch looks as good from the outside as it does from the inside. Now we're going to walk over there past that stone building because there's a very special treat in store for us. As my eyes focus in on the display in this shady raised bed, I'm stopped in my tracks. This really is the finest display of hardy slipper orchids or cypripedium that I've ever seen. There's extensive variety among the different cypripedium on display, some with large flowers, some with masses of smaller ones. And the size of the clumps is really impressive too. You may recall that I also grow cypripedium and this bed here was set up using similar techniques to the one I used. I linked to my setup video above. However, Caroline says that the real key to success with cypripedium is feeding and doing it early on in the season, perhaps even before the shoots emerge. A high nitrogen feed at this time is key to getting plants to bulk up. Personally, I find it quite hard to remember to do this in say early February when most other plants are dormant. But after seeing Caroline's success and her magnificent display, I really will try harder to remember going forward. Caroline also mentions feeding the leaves after flowering perhaps with a high potash feed. And that is something I'll definitely do with my sips this year. Caroline is always at hand and happy to help with cultural information or gardening problems. I love how she always ends her conversation with a reminder of what needs to be done now in the garden. So helpful for anyone starting out. And do you know what Caroline's tip for today is? It's to do with daffodils and the fact that their foliage looks so messy in May, yet you can't cut it back because you need to feed those bulbs to get flowers for next year. Caroline says to use some fertilizer, whatever you have around, and just feed those leaves. After a good feed, I guess, wait a little while and then cut the leaves straight back. They'll have enough goodness in them from that fertilizer feed to feed the bulbs for next year and you don't have to look at those messy yellowing leaves. And that brings me to the end of this video. If you would like to visit Kulak Garden, I've placed the link in the video description below. So do check out their website and do go visit as soon as you can because the garden is looking absolutely magnificent at the moment. I hope you liked this video. Check back on Sunday for one of my quick and easy guides, th less than three minutes. And then next Thursday, you can expect another longer video from me too. Have a great day. Bye.